Dach Almar. This is Coach Timmy from Berlin. The nomination from Berlin, Netherlands. 10 points. I wish you all the best for the presentation. I hope you can use this information for your own practice sessions. Here we go. In this case, I've chosen my six and a half year old student, Elena. She started with her first lesson in July 2019. Elena is playing about two hours a week tennis and has one hour fundamental movement skills. She attends also a ballet class one time a week and plays one time a week also field hockey. For all kids, these three things are very important when working with them. Kids want um, to explore, they want to have lots of fun on the court, and they want to be loved. This is very important that they feel that uh, we care for them. And when we do this, and when they have these three things on the court, then there is a big chance that we push the bottom of their motivation. So what are the requirements for young kids in the age 5 to 10? Here we see two charts of um, Sports Scotland and Sports Coach UK. It shows the requirements for physical development of female and male athletes. I have marked the age 5 to 10 at both girls and boys. And you can see that strength, power, speed and agility plus mobility are important from the age 5 to 8 in both gender groups. Um, while SSS specific sports skills become more important from the age of 9. FMS stands for fundamental movement skills. In the same time window, low structured development changes to moderate structure. So here you see the same again also for the female chart and nevertheless the model can be adapted a bit from athlete to athlete but from the female chart it is very important also to know that strength training is very important through the whole female career because of a higher risk of getting osteoporosis. So the next chart is about setting a frame for the modern biomechanics. Here you see common movement solution in kids tennis and thus our body has a quite wide range in shoulder, elbow and wrist joints. It is normal that kids think that they can produce more power when they have big back swings. Um, a modern forehand for example has become more compact in men's and women's tennis and here um, you see like the juniors on that chart um, for example you see the one um, player separating the arms very early without having an upper body rotation uh, when loading for the forehand another student has an elbow very very close to the body um, what is always when the racket comes too late to the contact point um, the same is also in the middle picture where the girl hits the return or forehand very late. And these are the common um, mistakes which happen. It is okay that they happen, but we always should have a frame um, for the players, um, how the biomechanics should look like. And here we have the example from men's tennis. We have Federer, Djokovic and Nadal and team all with the different kind of a backswing um, with a different height of the elbow when the loading phase um, is going on but they all have different grips but they have also a compact backswing and this is the frame we should give also the young players that the ground strokes are compact So the aim of a grown player should be a sound biomechanics on ground strokes and um, the player is like this um, able to defer the spin rate 
the speed, the trajectory and the bounce height also of the ball as seen here in the two charts. We have the flat, the spin, the heavy spin, um, the different RPMs and we have also the different heights of the bounce of the ball. Um, when you start with kids, they should aim for the high trajectory which is linked to a high bounce of the ball. So the skill is first needed when growing up and playing on normal sized court with green or pressure balls. My personal opinion is that um, you shouldn't be too specific with kids um, learning the biomechanics, but they can learn a lot from the beginning and it is good to give them a frame um, with, with early specification because anyway there will be a lot of mistakes and they will do a lot of um, different moves so they get to their own development um, of the technique. Um, this is Elena's first lesson. You can see here already um, that I taught her the semi-open stance uh, while sitting on the box in an angle that she has the semi-open stance using a ball and this is her first yeah, you can say her first uh, kinetic chain release on the forehand in her first lesson already. As we saw in the model in chart 3, the strength is an important skill to teach. And from early age on. Yeah, the own body weight exercise are the best. And it's always nice to have like um, animals. Um, within the practice because kids are very much related to animals and animal moves are perfect to have strengthen and stretching um, their body in in one. So you can see here um, the different exercises. Uh, in the first video Elena did the eagle, now she's doing the caterpillar. This is uh, strength and stretching exercise and also the core exercise with the skateboard is great. Um, yeah. Yeah, for me the most important skill to develop a sound combat ready technique is to train um, the tracking of the ball. So ball trajectory tracking is a very important um, yeah, topic. And here you can see some exercises from low distance where Elena has to react. The balls uh, have, have different um, size, different speed, and they always jump different and she has to track the ball. And this is uh, eye-hand coordination um, exercise very much. Later on, you would um, go on a, on a um, higher distance and yeah, and do exercises where you adapt the distance um, to the player. We all know sending and receiving um, has become more important than training too much the ground strokes. So um, surf and return plus is of great importance. And the best way to learn the pronation on surf is through throwing. You all don't know this. And here you see Elena um, in different exercises throwing a tennis ball, a mini football. And she develops also with a stick the pronation movement on the surf and also the dynamics. Yeah, in this chart you see... Um, Colored balloons. Colored balloons are superb for kids to learn things. And here Elena has to strike a surf plus one with a big softball. And when she finishes the surf, I call the color um, for the net clearance she has to reach. And when she manages to hit the balloon, um, she gets extra points. <laughs> Great is also to use the balloons for sectioning the length of a shot 
And like that, the kids learn to evaluate the point of bounce of the ball quite fast. So Jelena has to call the long ball yellow, the middle ball green and the short ball red. And has to catch it after one bounce. This next chart shows a great exercise where Jelena has to defer between narrow focus on the ball and wide focus. Um, I implemented her favorite Disney character Elsa into the exercise. This is great because kids have like this more fun. And Elsa has moved from one ice flow to another by her mom. And Elena has to send snowballs to Elsa. So the tennis balls are the snowballs. And like that, Elena learns to watch the ball while noticing the moving direction of the opponent. So this is a great exercise where she has fun. She has her favorite Disney characters. And yeah, in a passive way, you teach her to watch the opponent and to have um, yeah a better peripheral vision. Yeah, in this chart you see another great game. Um, I called this East to West. Elena has to feed the lions in the cave with meatballs. So this time there are meatballs and she has to feed the lion in the cave, which are also balloons. And when the lions had four of the meatballs, they have enough energy to move um, from the east of Africa to the west of Africa into the other cage. And Elena, of course, has to put them into the cage. So this is, again, a lot of fun. And, yeah, um, it is a nice way to teach kids the direction of um, cross-court, inside out, and down the line. So very important also in the young age is to try to avoid disbalances. And... Um, I taught Elena from the beginning to play a lot more forehands than backhands and um, that's why I tried to let her play also a lot of times bilateral, so um, forehands with the left hand and we work up the um, the backhand body side, so the, the left body side also with exercises in the athletic sessions so that she doesn't have issues on the long term. In this chart you see two examples of how I use the framing for sound foreign biomechanics and the development of the kids. In the first um, video you see that I give Elena a kinesthetic help for the upward and through the ball motion of the forehand to produce spin. And in the second video you see her using the stick, so she learns to use the upper body to rotate, but not separating the hands too early. And the contact with the stick until the racket drops helps the kids to avoid a too loopy backswing. So now you see her... Um, turning the body when she goes now to the ball and the, the racket stays on the stick and so she's not able to um, to swing further back. So she goes down and then is right at the contact point. Yeah, and here we have another example um, of Jelena um, framing the sound biomechanics of the forehand here um, in a bilateral way she has two sticks and she is axing the sticks and you see that she's only turning her upper body and when she keeps the stick on the stick um, the backswing stays compact so she's able to time um, the stroke very well you see another exercise here with the stick um, where she is hitting a one-handed backhand and then um, using the racket. So always alternating with the stick and the racket. The stick has a better leverage. So she is like more helicoptering or helicoptering the, the, the stroke at the end. And you see with the racket she's not doing this. 
So this is a little bit uh, a practice for like keeping the wrist loose at the end. Yeah, here you see another example of a favorite exercise of Jelena. I prepared a um, 21 racket without strings with a plastic bag. She has to catch the balls I call butterflies. And you see the progression of this exercise where she has to slide and catch the ball where she's playing a low volley. Yeah, when we teach the holistic way, the mental part plays a big role from the beginning. And as I said before, animals are always helpful for kids to learn from. And here I use the visualization of animal skills that develop the mental aspect of the game. So Elena gets a tiger and a wolf to put into her pocket during training and to have their power and focus with her in practice. Yeah, cognitive training is also a big topic in kids training. Um, training the cognitive abilities of the kids is crucial to challenge their nervous system and here I use the visual cues and different running ways to the ball such as moving um, in the neutral position on, on number two, um, in the diagonal forward position is number one and the diagonal backward running position is number three. And at the net you have the visual cues and the dots with the colors on the bottom on the ground and Jelena has always to change between the view onto the chart and the eye-foot coordination. So when we come to the results of the holistic development you can see now in one and a half years of um, Jelena's development you can see in this picture that she's already able to handle um, yeah contact point variations for example she uses the two-handed backhand on the return on the high contact um, she can use the slice on the one-handed backhand on shoulder height and she uses also the one-handed backhand topspin um, I think it's her favorite shot because she's executing this naturally very very well but I let her decide in the future if she wants to play um, two-handed, one-handed or maybe she's also able to use both on, on high returns two-hand and on other occasions the one-handed that would be great yeah and in the following three videos you can see that um, her movements become yeah pretty much fluent so she gets more fluent moves and yeah the technique has become more mature has um, more yeah a frame now and her timing is also getting better so you can see how smooth she is now also starting to move um, you can see this when she's moving into the backhand corner, running around the um, backhand and playing the forehand. The surf technique is quite sound and also the move backwards to the smash and again forward to play the volley. Yeah, the videos from the first lesson to now are made in a time window of one year and eight months. So this is all the development of one year and eight months. In July she turned seven, so it will be two years. And in this last video you can see the problem solving abilities um, getting much better and better with being able to start to play rallies with a purpose. Yeah, so much for this um, presentation. Um, I want to thank you for your support and also in the name of Elena and also for your time. And we wish you all that tennis can be played very soon again under normal conditions. So stay healthy and see you around. Coach Demi from Tennis Warrior. And thanks Ruben for making the webinar possible.
Doi.